Uh, every once in a while I hit a slump with my riding and I think about why I started to ride with, to begin with. And this last week I was reminded looking around online that uh, February 20th this year is the 15th anniversary of Hunter S. Thompson passing and his contributions to the literary community, the journalistic community and the motorcycling community always come to mind when I think about that. And when I think about that, the one thing that comes to the forefront immediately is an article that he wrote that is a gonzo style, just as we've come to love and expect from Hunter review of a motorcycle that he wrote 30 years ago. Uh, and I'd like to share that with you. It is called Song of the Sausage Creature by Hunter S. Thompson. There are some things nobody needs in this world, and a bright red hunchback warp speed 900cc cafe racer is one of them. But I want one anyway, and on some days I actually believe I need one. That is why they're dangerous. Everyone has fast motorcycles these days. Some people go 150 miles an hour on two-lane blacktop roads, but not often. There are too many oncoming trucks and too many radar cops and too many stupid animals in the way. You have to be a little crazy to ride these super hot torque high-speed crotch rockets anywhere except a racetrack, and even there they will scare the whimpering shit out of you. There is, after all, not a pig's eye's worth of difference between going head-on into a Peterbilt or sideways into the bleachers. On some days you get what you want, and on others you get what you need. When Cycle World called me to ask if I would road test the new Harley Road King, I got uppity and I said I'd rather have a Ducati Superbike. It seemed like a chic decision at the time, and my friends in the superbike circuit got very excited. Hot damn, they said, we will take it to the track and blow the bastards away. Balls, I said, never mind the track. The track is for punks. We are road people. We are cafe racers. The cafe racer is a different breed, and we have our own situations. Pure speed in sixth gear on a 5,000 foot straightaway is one thing, but pure speed in third gear on a gravel strewn downhill S turn is quite another. But we like it. A thoroughbred cafe racer will ride all night through a fog storm on freeway traffic to put himself into what somebody told him was the ugliest and tightest decreasing radius turn since Genghis Khan invented the corkscrew. Cafe racing is mainly a matter of taste. It is an atavistic mentality, a peculiar mix of low style, high speed, pure dumbness, and overweening commitment to the cafe life and its dangerous pleasures. I am a cafe racer myself on some days, and it is one of my finest addictions. I am not without scars on my brain and my body, but I can live with them. I still feel a shudder in my spine every time I see a picture of a Vincent Black shadow, or when I walk into a public restroom to hear crippled men whispering about the terrifying Kawasaki Triple. I have visions of compound femur fractures and large black men in white hospital suits holding me down on a gurney while a nurse called Bess sews the flaps of my scalp together with a stitching drill. Ho oh, ho, thank God for these flashbacks. The brain is such a wonderful instrument until God sinks his teeth into it. Some people hear Tiny Tim singing when they go under, and some others hear the song of the sausage creature. When the Ducati turned up in my driveway, nobody knew what to do with it. I was in New York covering a polo tournament, and people had threatened my life. My, locter, my lawyer said I should give myself up and enroll in the Federal Witness Protection Program. Other people said it had something to do with the polo crowd. The motorcycle business was the last straw. I had to be, it had to be the work of my enemies, or people who wanted to hurt me. It was the vilest kind of bait, and they knew I would go for it. Of course, you want to cripple the bastard? Send him a 130 mile per hour cafe racer, and include some license plates. He'll think it's a street bike. He's queer for anything fast. Which is true. I've been a connoisseur of fast motorcycles all my life. I bought a brand new 650 BSA Lightning when it was billed as the fastest motorcycle ever tested by Hot Rod Magazine. I've ridden a 500-pound Vincent through traffic on the Ventura Freeway with burning oil on my legs and run a Kawasaki 750 Triple through Beverly Hills at night with a head full of acid. I've ridden with Sonny Barger and smoked weed with bikers in biker bars with Jack Nicholson, Grace Slick, Ron Ziegler, and my infamous old friend Ken Kesey, a legendary cafe racer. Some people will tell you that slow is good, and it may be on some days, but I am here to tell you, fast is better. I've always believed this, in spite of the trouble it's caused me. Being shot out of a cannon will always be better than being squeezed out of a tube. That's why God made fast motorcycles, Bubba.
So when I got back from New York and found a fiery red rocket-style bike in my garage, I realized I was back in the road testing business. The brand new Ducati 900 Campion del Mundo Desmodue Super Sport Double Barreled Magnum Cafe Racer filled me with feelings of lust every time I looked at it. Others felt the same way. My garage quickly became a magnet for drooling Superbike groupies. They quarreled and bitched at each other about who would be the first to help me evaluate my new toy. And I did, of course, need a certain spectrum of opinions beside my own to properly judge this motorcycle. The Woody Creek Preserve Environmental Testing Facility is a long way from Daytona or even top fuel challenge sprints on the Pacific Coast Highway, where teams of big bore Kawasaki's and Yamahas are said to race head-on against each other in death-defying games of chicken at 100 miles an hour. No, not everybody who buys a high-dollar torque brute yearns to go out in a ball of fire on a public street in L.A., some of us are decent people who want to stay out of the emergency room, but still blast through neo-gridlock traffic in residential districts whenever we feel like it. For that, we need fine machinery. Which we had, no doubt about that. The Ducati people in Jersey had opted, for some reasons of their own, to send me the 900 SSSP for testing, rather than their 916 crazy fast state-of-the-art superbike track racer. It was far too fast, they said and prohibitively expensive to farm out for testing to a gang of half-mad Colorado boys who think they're world-class cafe racers. The Ducati 900 is a finely engineered machine. My neighbors called it beautiful and admired its racing lines. The nasty little bugger looked like it was going 90 miles an hour when it was standing still in my garage. Taking it on the road, though, was a genuinely terrifying experience. I had no sense of speed until I was going 90 and coming up fast on a bunch of pickup trucks going to a wet curve along the river. I went for both brakes, but only the front one worked, and I almost went end over end. I was out of control, staring at the tailpipe of a U.S. mail truck, still stabbing frantically at my rear brake pedal, which I just couldn't find. I am too tall for these new age road racers. They are not built for any rider taller than 5'9", and the rear set brake pedal was not where I thought it would be. Mid-sized Italian pimps who like to race from one cafe to another on the boulevards of Rome in a flat line prone position might like this, but I do not. I was hunched over the tank like a person diving into a pool that got emptied yesterday. Wacko. Bashed on the concrete bottom. Flesh ripped off. A sausage creature with no teeth. Fucked up for the rest of its life. We all love torque, and some of us have taken it straight over the high side from time to time. And there's always pain in that. But there's also fun. The deadly element. And fun is what you get when you screw this monster on. Boom. Instant takeoff. No screeching or squawking around like a fool with your teeth clamping down and your tongue and your mind completely empty of everything but fear. No. This bugger digs right in and shoots you straight down the pipe. For good or ill. On my first takeoff, I hit second gear and went through the speed limit on a two-lane blacktop highway full of ranch traffic. By the time I went up to third, I was going 75 and the tack was barely above 4,000 RPM. And that's when it got its second wind. From 4,000 to 6,000 in third, you will take you from 75 to 95 in two seconds. And after that, Bubba, you still have fourth, fifth, and sixth. Ho, ho. I never got to sixth gear, and I didn't get deep into fifth. This is a shameful admission for a full-bore cafe racer, but let me tell you something, old sport. This motorcycle is simply too goddamn fast to ride at any speed in any kind of normal road traffic unless you're ready to go straight down the center line with your nuts on fire and a silent scream in your throat when aimed in the right direction at high speed though it has unnatural capabilities this i unwittingly discovered as i made my approach to a sharp turn across some railroad tracks saw that i was going way too fast and that my only chance was to veer right and screw it on totally in a desperate attempt to leapfrog the curve by going airborne it was a bold and reckless move, but it was necessary, and it worked. I felt like evil Knievel as I soared across the tracks with rain in my eyes and my jaws clamped together in fear. I tried to spit down on the tracks as I passed them, but my mouth was too dry. I landed hard on the edge of the road and lost my grip for a moment as the Ducati began fishtailing crazily into oncoming traffic. For two or three seconds, I came face to face with the sausage creature. But somehow the brute straightened out. I passed a school bus on the right and got bike under control long enough to gear down and pull off onto an abandoned gravel driveway where I stopped and turned off the engine. My hands had seized up like claws and the rest of my body was numb. I felt nauseous and I cried for my mama. But nobody heard and I went into a trance for 30 or 40 seconds until I was finally able to light a cigarette and calm down enough to ride home. I was too hysterical to shift gears, so I went the whole way in first at 40 miles an hour. 
Whoops. What am I saying? Tall stories. Ho, ho. We are motorcycle people. We walk tall and we laugh at whatever's funny. We shit on the chests of the weird. But when we ride very fast motorcycles, we ride with immaculate sanity. We might abuse a substance here and there, but only when it's right. The final measure of any rider's skill is the inverse ratio of his preferred traveling speed to the number of bad scars on his body. It is that simple. If you ride fast and crash, you're a bad rider. And if you are a bad rider, you should not ride motorcycles. The emergence of the superbike has heightened this equation drastically. Motorcycle technology has made such a great leap forward. Forward. Take the Ducati. You want optimum cruising speed on this bugger? Try 90 miles per hour in fifth gear at 5,500 RPM. And just then, you see a bull moose in the middle of the road. Whacko. Meet the sausage creature. Or maybe not. The Ducati 900 is so finely engineered and balanced and torqued that you can do 90 miles per hour in fifth gear through a 35 mile per hour zone and get away with it. The bike is just not, is not just fast. It is extremely quick and responsive and it will do amazing things. It's like riding a Vincent Black Shadow, which would outrun an F-86 jet jet fighter on the takeoff runway. But at the end, the F-86 would go airborne and the Vincent would not. And there's no point in trying to turn it. Whammo. The sausage creature strikes again. There is a fundamental difference, however, between the old Vincents and the new breed of superbikes. If you rode the Black Shadow at top speed for any length of time, you would almost certainly die. That is why there are not many life members of the Vincent Black Shadow Society. The Vincent was like a bullet that went straight. The Ducati is like a magic bullet in Dallas that went sideways and hit JFK and the governor of Texas at the same time. It was impossible. But so was my terrifying sideways leap across the railroad tracks on the 900 SP. The bike did it easily with the grace of a fleeing Tomcat. The landing was so easy I remember thinking, God damn it, if I had screwed it on a little more, I could have gone a lot farther. Maybe this is the new cafe racer macho. My bike is so much faster than yours that I dare you to ride it, you lame little turd. Do you have the balls to ride this bottomless pit of torque? That is the attitude of the New Age Superbike Freak, and I am one of them. On some days, they are about the most fun you can have with your clothes on. The Vincent just killed you a lot faster than a Superbike will. A fool wouldn't ride the Vincent Black Shadow more than once, but a fool can ride a 900 Ducati many times, and it will always be a blood-curdling kind of fun. That is the curse of speed, which has plagued me all my life. I am a slave to it. On my tombstone they will carve. It never got fast enough for me. Rest in peace, Hunter.